welcome to Anson Griffith's Occasion series in MATLAB tutorials. Today we'll be looking at image processing and in particular OCR, that's optical character recognition. And just to say, this example code is taken from uh, the MATLAB computer vision toolbox. Uh, the code is not mine, I've tweaked it here and there, but I've used a different image and we did not get 100% success. We might even have got 80% success. success. But I just want to go through the problems rather than the one that they gave where everything works fine. So if I just go down a little bit, there's my original image. Uh, so it's a street sign in Dublin and we want to try and pick out the text, which is say around there. So there's a number of problems with this. You can guess already that here that grouting in the red brick could be an I or an L or something like that. Uh, and we have that all over the place. And the other thing here is that uh, the contrast isn't too great between the text and the background. So the old threshold value is going to run into a bit of trouble as well. So so I've heavily commented it here. So and some problems here uh, about advantages and disadvantages. So <clears throat> hopefully you can get the orientation right, different sizes, different orientation. That'll all be sorted out. Uh, different languages. Um, and disadvantages here is noise and foliage and all that sort of stuff. So we'll just talk about some of the code as we go along here. So I've read in the original image, just go down and have a look at that. I've got it in grayscale. And then down here, I got the MSER, maximally stable extreme regions, extremal regions. So just go back a little bit. So we're there and this threshold delta caused a little problem and we're looking at region areas of areas that are 200 pixels square to 7,800. Those numbers will change, the threshold delta will change. So when we get down a little, book, a little bit and look at the threshold delta, you can see here we ran into problems, some of the I's and the A's, we were picking them up, which is a bit unfortunate, and some of the L's, but you know, just to show now you can play around with these, but you could be playing around with them all day trying to fix it. And as far as I can make out, as far as I'm concerned, there's no automatic way to change those values. It's just trial and error. So, um, mentioned that. Yeah, I ran it at one at one stage, but then it just got very messy. So now we're going to try and remove the non-text region. So we're going to try and remove these lads, these bricks and by geometric shapes and those bits there. So there's four filters, these the eccentricity, the extent, the Euler number and the solidity. So the eccentricity, um, so uh, one is a line segment, zero is a circle, so we're trying to find something in between it. The extent is the ratio of the pixels in the region, the ratio of pixels in the bounding box. The Euler number is there, so that's the number of objects minus the number of holes, which causes students a bit of problem. So all these students here have an Euler number of one because there's one connected object and zero holes. These are zero because there's one object and one hole. And then down here, this is minus one because there's one connected object and two holes. I think I got every letter in the output. No, I may have left one out, but I think everything is there. And the solidity there is the area divided by the convex area. So uh, we'd be you know, the solidity of a brick would be um, very high because it'd almost be one because the proportion of pixels in the convex hull to would be very very high. So. We get the aspect ratio there from the bounding box. Here are our filters. 
a clade rent the oil are number a fair bit, minus four, minus three, minus two. But you're just taking out the really weird ones. You know, remember it's the number of connected objects minus the number of holes. So we just use these filters there. And then on these lines, we remove them. So we just remove them wherever this was. These guys were found to be true. You just made them blank. And then, so what's left is that. Now that's not great because uh, the AILL of Shirley Connell and the C are all brutal. That's the only way to describe it. And so next thing again is to remove the non-text regions and the stroke width variation. And we do a little example down here. We pick the fifth object. So there we are, inverted. We, we skeletonize it, and there's the stroke width image. So let's go and have a little look at that. So we just picked the fifth one at random. We padded it just to make sure we we got it all right. I mean by, by padding, by the way, you've grown the width and uh, height by one in every side. So here you morphed it, you you skeletonized it, just to go down a little bit. There, there's the skeletonizer, and you do that by you say BW morph tin, so contract, contract, contract or erosion really, and you do it an infinite number of times until you're left with just the bare bone, literally the bare bone. Excuse me. And so there's the stroke with image there. So uh, yeah, we have that. Uh, and how we get the stroke with image is we get the distance image, and this distance image from there is this tilde is the inverse or the negative, so we get the BW distance. And remember, the default is the Euclidean distance. Now, if you don't know what that is, you're just going to have to go look it up. Sorry, I can't cover everything. So remember, BW distance can give you oil or, or city or block or whatever they are so this is euclidean distance okay so they came up with the metric <coughs> um, and the metric is um, here so it's the standard deviation of the stroke width values divided by the mean and the stroke width value so what they're saying is, because this is a paper written in 2012, a text candidate region is removed from the stroke width standard deviation divided by stroke width mean is greater than 0.35. Now that's from their comments in MATLAB. I ran it here as 0.45. I see I have 0.4 in the initial text, but it was actually 0.35. That's my mistake because I was playing around with so much. So. The stroke width of characters in a line of text are consistent among characters. So the stroke width, so you just get the standard deviation and the mean would be fairly constant. Run a for loop there, skeletonize it, uh, do the stroke width metric, and then you're only left with the ones that are uh, within that metric. So there we are. So we've removed most of the junk, bar that lad. Next thing, code is given there, and what we're doing is we're putting bounding boxes around each bit of detected text. <coughs> Excuse me, just leave that up for a second. Leave the code up, I mean. If you have the computer vision toolbox, you won't be looking at that. So we have the computer vision toolbox, and you're just putting a bounding box around each. And then the last bit is you want to merge all of these. You want to merge all of these into one large bounding box. This lad, when we expand these, these guys won't overlap. So it's only when you expand them and they overlap that you keep them. This guy is, when you expand it, won't overlap anything. So therefore, you think this is a... A dodge area. 
you do that there. And we look at the end there, and there it is. Okay, so hope that helps. Thanks very much for listening. Bye.